The remote forests of Borneo is a treasure trove of nature waiting to be discovered. One place in particular has been untouched by modernity, a haven of coexistence between man and nature. Exploring sites of history, culture, and natural beauty, I am on a quest for treasures. Treasures which tell the story of the people whose heritage are under threat. I am Linda Black, your heritage hunter. Sarawak, the largest state in Malaysia, is situated on the northwestern part of Borneo Island. The landscape here is outlined by lush rainforests that are as old as time and which are rich in biodiversity, with new species of plants and animals being discovered each year. Eager to find my own treasures, I head to a watery preservation deep in its heart. Known to the locals as Batang Ai, a land of rivers that cleanses the soul of the earth. My journey begins in Kuching, the capital city of Sarawak. Kuching means cat, and like a cat, I'm curious about my three treasures. And my clues are the elixir of life, servants and the sea, and a perfect circle. But I head first to meet Dato Len, who's in charge of an agency involved in the state's ecological conservation. Well, this would be my first time out to Batang Ai. Do you know what I can expect? If we talk about Batang Ai, mm -hmm. it's uh, very famous for our orangutan. And over and above that, we have a lot of wildlife. If you like that sort of uh, wildlife, whether it's flora or fauna, that is, is everything there. You can... Now, I am a treasure hunter of sorts, and one of my clues is the elixir of life. Do you have a clue or a hint of what that could possibly mean? I'm not very sure, but how I wish <laughs> I, I know because I can, I myself am very interested in that. All right, talk uh, about we all? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Batang Ai is nestled some 250 kilometers from Kuching, a four hour drive by car. The highway is narrow and I've been told not to stop until I hit a brick wall. This is the Batang Ai Hydroelectric Dam, the end of the road, but my journey has only just begun. Now I know I'm headed into a deep, steamy jungle, but riding along here on the river, it's nice and cool and the water is so clear. This is such a nice surprise. The hour and a half boat ride ended too soon as I arrived at Nanga Sumpa. This village will be my base camp during my time in Batang Ai. My first stop is a courtesy call to the Longhouse Chief. It's taboo not to stop on your way through the Longhouse as they believe you will take the wealth of the house away with you. The chief welcomes me with ceremony and a blessing for my hunt. <laughs> Batang Ai means main river, and the Ibans depend on its pristine waters for transport and food. Over here, you eat what you catch or grow. Otherwise, you don't eat at all. Well, that's what I call a catch. You think I can have some later, maybe? In case I'm not so lucky. I have to call upon my skills as a hunter if I don't want to starve. Fortunately, I have a good tutor, my boatman, mm. Guyang. Okay, so apparently I do a little twirl almost. Ready? Up! Oh, watch out, watch out! Mmm, <laughs> <laughs> leaves, yummy! <laughs> No luck with the nets. I now have smaller fish to fry. I've been relegated to simpler methods, baskets. The trick is to turn the rocks in the riverbed, hoping to release small fish that are hiding from the strong current. All right, let's see what we've got here. Oh, 
at least I caught one. <laughs> I gotta eat what I catch. Glad I'm not that hungry. Perhaps vegetarian might be the way to go. The sago palm is abundant in this region and is just some of the many edibles in the forest. The part that is eaten is the heart or the inner core of the tree. It actually has a bit of a bitter taste to it. Mm -hmm. Get right down to the meat of it there. Mmm, it has a very nice flavor. Cooking is a simple affair of stuffing ingredients into bamboo tubes gathered from the forest. There are more than a hundred varieties of edible wild fruit and scores of jungle vegetables, all of which the Iban know and have access to. For centuries, the forest has provided them with whatever they needed, and there's no need to ask for more. Ooh, lovely. That smells fantastic. It smells so fragrant with the leaves on it. Very nice. That's amazing. Mm, yamai. 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 Panto. Mm. Panto yamai. It's very salty. The the before when it just tasted bitter, and now it tastes a bit salty. Well, the rice is perfect. Thank yeah. you. Yamai. Yamai. Hmm. Very hot. Very hot. Thank you. Thanks. Now I've got a complete meal. I get to try the whole thing, even though I've cheated a little bit. He's just helping me with the fish. Oh, wow. Smoked fish. Really delicious with the rice and then the salty palm heart there. Gosh, this is delicious. I think this is paradise. This is perfect. The Iban turn to the forest not only for food, but for medicine as well. There are over 140 different kinds of medicinal plants to be found here. Teddy Diaz has been a guide in these parts for the last 20 years and has an encyclopedic knowledge of the plant life here. Perhaps he can lead me to my treasure. The uh, bushes around here, they are all primary forests. Primary forests, yeah. what does that mean? Primary forests, which mean uh, this, this part of the forest has never been cut down, oh. no cultivation. Yeah. Okay. You can look, all the trees are all slender and thin. Mm. Other growth is quite clear. And uh, well, watch out for this tree in front. Do not touch it. Why is that? Uh, it's a kind of poisonous tree. The local name is called Rangas. If you look at the uh, sap over here, it's black. Should you be in contact with it, mm -hmm. you will have the external body poisoning. Your body can swell like three, four times the size. So watch out when you, you walk out in our forest, try not to touch trees that you don't recognize. They might mm -hmm. be poisonous and so on. Warning heated. Yeah, it is very rough, especially when you rub a certain way. This is our local or traditional sandpaper. Okay. It's for um, wood polishing or smoothing mm -hmm. the wood and also the oh, okay, knife right. here, right. like this one. So it helps to make it smooth, smooth right? Smooth, yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, for the ladies who want a beautiful clean nail, they mm -hmm. also use this to clean it, just like <laughs> having filing. A little buffer, yeah. And also medicinal value. I just said the medicine is way into the roots. Yeah. Okay, part of these roots actually remove the bark, mm -hmm. scrape into wood chips, mm -hmm. yeah, or sawdust, uh, boil it, and the purpose first thing will be for the serious cough. Okay. Uh, Helps tonsils, with that. yeah. Mm -hmm. Ulcers. And also if you have a mild food poisoning Ooh. after eating stale food. Okay. And also to helps to get rid of the uh, parasite in your intestine. Okay. So we, we, we don't really need medicine from 
the clinic because we have this hours. No, it's in your yeah. backyard. Yeah. <laughs> Minor step. Okay. Yeah. Oh, we are lucky. Yeah? It's just a tree that I want to show you. Uh, this tree is called Bintangol tree, that's a local name. Mm -hmm. uh, the leaf itself is mm -hmm. slightly different than any other leaf because this leaf it does not has any leaf margin. Mm -hmm. yeah? And um, see the uh, sap, mm -hmm. it contains antibody. Yeah? And they also have uh, latex or sap mm -hmm. on tree. And it's not only used by we as a native for infection. Mm -hmm. The world is actually happy. Yeah. In a way, it's useful. What else? Well, this is actually being discovered that they can stop HIV virus. No way. Well, yes. Really? Oh, yeah. That would be the find of the century. Somehow or rather, the uh, the scientists came back to the same tree, the same spot. Mm -hmm. They uh, tap the latex, mm -hmm. and um, they discovered that the antibody doesn't work. Um, they realized that it needs a, uh, an infection from a kind of species of beetle but it needs a few years of process in order to change the chemical in the plant or in the so tree. So it needs to have a beetle? Yes. Now, the treasure I was looking for, I thought was something I could drink, like a liquid. But this sap right here, which has the potential to save perhaps millions of lives, is my treasure, the elixir of life. The forest of Batangai is home to many species of endangered animals, but the Iban are allowed to hunt those that are not, like the wild boar, barking deer, and mouse deer. Hunting is a daily affair, and if you can't fish like me, then you'd better learn to hunt. Ingot is one of the best trackers in the village, and nothing escapes his eye. Wild boar. Really? Yeah. Yes. Fresh wild boar prints. Time for action. This traditional trap is triggered by a tripwire, which releases the spring and tightens the knot around the animal's leg, preventing escape. Awesome. <laughs> it works. <laughs> now let's see if it'll work on the real thing. The Iban were once fierce headhunters. I have encroached on the territory of a well-known headhunter from Nangasumpa, and I need to pay my respects to him. Let's see. If you come here, you put the money here. Mm -hmm. Okay, you give me good luck. For good luck. All right, we're gonna need that. Yeah. This grave belongs to Ingat's great-great-grandfather. It's more than a hundred years old and is littered with personal items for a safe journey in the afterlife. I wonder if my treasure lies here. <laughs> now my guide tells me that this blade is a head hunting blade. It serves no other purpose. And if you can tell, it's flat on one side and curved on the other, which makes it more aerodynamic for a clean kill. Otherwise, if it were flat on both sides, it'd be more of a hacking motion. So even when they were dealing out death, they were merciful. We take our leave, hoping this mighty hunter will bring us good fortune in our hunt. A quick look back at the trap springs a pleasant surprise. Well, what a fantastic catch. Now this boar looks to be about one and a half, maybe years old going to be a fantastic meal for somebody. Um, he has a lot of fight in him, but uh, with a good tracker and a good hunter, we're able to wrestle him down. I'm sure the village will be happy to see our catch because I'm going to share it with them. While wild boar may be a prized catch to the Iban, I was more interested in finding out what they would consider a prized possession. Village chief Nyom Bang tells me more. Can I see them? Yeah, I can. He shows me a set of old jars that they now use to store household items like rice, wine, seeds, and even clothes. These are heirlooms passed down through the generations. 
He says some of these jars are at least a few hundred years old and came from Chinese merchant shipmen who came to trade in Sarawak. His forefathers exchanged them for servitude as indentured labor. I'm really amazed by these jars behind me because not only are they so beautiful and in great condition, but to find them in such a primitive place. Now, based on what the chief has told me, these are clearly my treasure, the servant and the sea. With two treasures in the bag, I am hopeful to find the final one. But for now, it's time to retire for the night to my humble lodge. And uh, now we are here. Batang Ai is one of the best places in the world to spot orangutan in the wild. But a sighting is not guaranteed as they were extremely shy animals. Walk around this place called Salong. Okay. This would be a good spot to look for an orangutan. In order to catch a glimpse, we'll have to travel much deeper into the forest, way away from human habitation. It's very quiet. Orangutan are tree dwellers. Despite their size, they are extremely nimble and move effortlessly through the forest canopy. As such, much of our time is spent looking up. Nice. You just spotted the two uh, orangutan nests. Okay. One and a half months old. How can you tell? No, the the um, the twigs, the leaves are already dry, really oh. brown. But I can, I know it's two, mm -hmm. so yeah. which means um, it must be a mother orangutan, a young baby, oh. and the other one must be the other older sibling or other older child. Okay. See, look at the palm. Yeah. It has been ripped open. Yeah, it looks looks like a lightning struck it or something. Mm -mm, it's not lightning. No. That is the um, the mark of the round and they rip open the, the, the palm fronds of the branch in order to get the palm heart. Really? Yeah. The palm heart or the palm shoot is actually eatable. We mm -hmm. also eat it. It's yummy. Yeah, I actually yeah. tried it the other day. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Mm. It's delicious. So, but I can't believe they did this with their bare oh, hands yeah. just to get look at, at the, it. Look at the spikes, yeah, the thorns. Mm. It looks like it's not that old. Yeah. If you look at the uh, leaves, yeah, it's still green. Still a fresh mark. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's about one week old. One week. Oh, so I believe the round must be somewhere around here. Oh, oh, good. Teddy tells me that in a recent survey, 10,000 orangutans were counted across Sarawak and neighboring state Saba. Their numbers have dwindled due to habitat loss and their slowness to breed. Oh. There was yesterday's nest. Yesterday? Yeah, yesterday's nest. We, They've moved on. Yeah. Now that I've seen a fresh one, now I know how he could tell the other one was a month old. So we are getting closer. Mm. Getting closer. Good sign. Yeah. yeah. Mm. No, no. Oh, he, he said he saw, not he saw, now actually there's, there's the uh, bear cat of the uh, tree branch over there. A, Can you see a bear it? cat? Yeah, a bear cat, yeah. It's actually quite rare to see because bear cat is nocturnal. Mm. And once if they sleep during the day, they don't move. Yeah, it's it's not moving thing. much now. No, just sleeping. We've been trekking an hour with no sign of the primate. All hopes of an orangutan sighting are dwindling. It was a last ditch attempt, but it has paid off. Oh, he saw it. Yeah, 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 he saw it there, yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh we are lucky, yeah, yeah. We are lucky. It's quite big. It is big one. Let me see on the cheek. Yeah, it's a male. It's roughly about 18 to 21 years old. Really? Yeah. He's munching. He's munching. Yeah. 
Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, where he's sitting and the, the, the tree and the branch is yeah, moving. He's eating something. Hmm. You're lucky, man. Yeah, yeah. I feel you. So worth the trek? Well, yeah, it's worth totally the trek. worth it. Totally yeah. worth it. I feel lucky. <laughs> Considering that orangutans are so elusive, I feel extremely privileged at having seen one in its natural environment. love the spirit of community and family here. Everything is shared. It's really a lovely thought, lovely gesture. That really smells fantastic. <laughs> the euphoria from the orangutan sighting could only be matched by the evening's feast, followed by song and dance. I couldn't have asked for a better way to round off an eventful trip. Except there's the matter of my final treasure. I found that in Batangai, man and nature are driven by nature's cycles of life and death. This, I guess, is the essence of my mission. Surely, my last treasure lies here, the perfect circle. It's a natural circle of coexistence in perfect harmony. As for me, my journey continues. I'm always on a quest to find treasures of heritage before they are lost forever. <laughs>